another HITC Sport and how are you feeling right now? Was it a tough weekend? I don't care if you just accidentally sat on your cat. I don't care if you just caught your wife in bed with your dad. I don't care if you've been diagnosed with type 2 herpes in your throat. None of you, none of you can be possibly feeling as bad as Nuno Espirito Santo. This man who with that face should be looking constantly happy. Because I'm sorry, with that Santa Claus beard, a miserable Santo looks like a homeless Santo. A Santo who looks like he has to dig through the bins outside Sainsbury's for his morning brunch. Oh, that's nice. A croissant covered in rat fur. A half empty hot chocolate with chunks of broken teeth swimming in the cup. Honestly, all Santo has to do is sit outside Debenhams on a street in London and he'll probably soon have a stranger offering to buy him a sandwich from the deli. I mean, look at him. Look how miserable he looks. He knows. Nobody associated with the Tottenham Hotspur wanted him at the job. He was what? Seventh choice man? No, no, Sando is out of a job. But of course he is. Spurs have already lost 3 0 in the Premier League three times this season. I mean, they were 3 0 down at half time in the North London Derby. And there's been another defeat at West Ham. And they're currently sitting third in the group in the Europa Conference League. Which is a bit like struggling to read the back of a cereal box. Chris Wolf, they lost 1 0 to Chelsea's feeder club. I'm convinced. Vitesse Arnhem only exist to serve as the foster parents for Chelsea's kids. I mean, they don't exist to win trophies. They just exist to give Mason Mount a shower and a hug. I mean, don't worry. I'm going to recap the entire Premier League football weekend tomorrow. But right now, oh right now, it's all about the Tottenham situation. Right. The performance against Manchester United was utterly disgusting. You're playing as a brittle, out of sorts crisis club. You're armed with arguably one of the most fearsome strikers on the planet. And you register zero shots on goal. Yeah, they showed the ambition of a plastic teapot. David De Gea could have spent the entirety of the game reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire on his iPad. I mean, Harry Maguire, who last week looked about as imposing as the fat one off the Morbegs. Well, here, he could have spent the entire of the second half chatting up someone's sister in the crowd because Tottenham had. And nothing. Listen, it was an interesting tactical switch from Ali. Utterly chucking his expensive width in the bin, who instead put two pensioners up front. Ozzy, the strike force, has a combined age of 70. But calm down, alright? They also have a combined 1,238 career goals between them. I mean, this is no ordinary couple of old men with bladder problems. Brilliant performance from Man United. Ali, once again, saving his job for another month. But back to Tottenham. Maybe this is a dose of reality for Daniel Levy. A man who saw his team reach a Champions League final, only to dispose of the guy who got them there within six months and then you had Jose Mourinho within your grasp I mean do you know how many Premier League matches he lost by three goals as Tottenham's boss um once at the Etihad that's it now it's happening to you twice a month how embarrassing for Levy this is a man who initially turned his nose up at Santo in May before then being driven to madness by the series of rejections I mean he must have realized the moment he was dialing the number for Gennaro Tuso, an angry little orc who once grabbed the Tottenham coach by the throat he must have realized then he was gone too far I mean it's been like a spotty teenager desperately trying to find a date for the prom after a summer of hearing nothing but you know and being pepper sprayed in the eyes you soon resort to just asking a friend of your mum's you know the 45 year old Divorcee with six chins, a shaved head and a tattoo of a rat's corpse on her neck. I mean, this is what Levy said when he appointed Santo. I've spoken already about the need to revert back to our core DNA of playing attacking, entertaining football. And I believe Nuno is the man who can take a talented group of players, embrace our young players coming through and build something special. I'm sorry, what? You want an attacking brand of football? Fine. And so appoint a man who, while at Wolves, consistently played five at the back. Nuno Santo does not play an attractive style of football. It's the type of football which would make most neutrals puke in their lap. Apparently, a burnt out Wolves manager who, two months before taking the job, was losing 4 0 home to Burnley. I mean, what did you expect? Last season, Wolves managed more than two goals in a game just once against Brighton in January, where they still didn't even win the match. Sacking a man with three Premier League titles and two Champions Leagues in his locker because you want to upgrade to sexy football only to appoint the guy 13th in the damn league. Why? Because he knows how to get a tune out of a walking pancake like Matt Doherty? So now it's back to Antonio Conte. So this is what sacking Mauricio Pochettino was all about. This was the big grand master plan. Sacking a likeable Tottenham hero to go and appoint two men no longer deemed good enough for Chelsea. I mean why not just park outside Stamford Bridge at the end of the working day and see if you can have whatever is left in Thomas Tuchel's lunchbox. I mean by then it'll probably just be two banana skins and a half eaten petty for Lou. Listen Conte is an incredible coach but does he have a sexy style of football? This is a Fabio Paratici idea written all over it. A defensive brand of Italian players 
play. I mean, for Paratisi, this cumbersome 3 5 2 formation. Oh, it probably tastes like a good pasta. Offer him 17 clean sheets a season, and he'll probably get 25s. But Tottenham have already done the higher up board winner thing in Mourinho, and uh, they very quickly got sick of him. I think when they sacked him days for the cup final, only to give the job to a borderline child, that was Daniel Levy admitting he doesn't really care about winning things. So Conte, he's an amazing coach. But this one doesn't work. Harry Kane won't be there next summer. The Kaku's already at Chelsea, so why? He's gonna build a team around Andrea Bellotti? Conte, do not do this. Do not do this to your career. Tottenham are a team who do not respect great managers. They treated Josie like a soggy meatball sandwich. And Conte, this squad is not getting into the top four. This man is a great manager, but he's not a magician. But what do you expect him to do with Harry Winks? I mean, offer him a defensive option like Eric Dyer at the back. Oh, just watch him. Just watch him react to that. As if you just offered him a bonus who's on well sweat. This is a nightmare waiting to happen. It got to a stage where Chelsea were willing to pay 26 million to get Conte to leave the club. There has to be a reason for that. If you heard that one of your mates had to pay his wife 30 grand to leave the house, you would assume that she tried to stab his knob with a fork every night. Conte is not an easy man to employ. He is a walking headache. Can you imagine him in the same dressing room as nice little boys like Deli Ali and Son? He'll have them in tears by lunchtime. Tottenham are a nice club. They need a nice manager. That's why Mauricio Pochettino was perfect. He looks like football's answer to James Lawrence Alcott. Both of them nice guys who smile with their eyes. Conte smiles with his teeth like a hungry shark. Pairing Conte with that Spurs dressing room. It's like setting up your bookish friend. You know that type who spends his afternoon playing Minecraft in his shed. It's like setting him up with that girl who regularly beats up toilet attendants and goes through a car park scratching vehicles with her keys for no other reason than just wanting the world to burn. Conte wants trophies. That is not aligned with Tottenham's ambition who just want a nice big stadium and a super club tag for doing nothing. Mark my words, this is going to fail. Just like with Nuno Santo, Tottenham had already turned their notice up at him in May. So clearly it was always going to break down after 10 games. They weren't really committed to Santo. The same way Conte won't be committed to Spurs because he's already rejected them in June. And you just know after the slightest infraction, the first four they'll defeat, the first refusal to allow him to sign someone in January, the first Harry Kane transfer request, he's going to be demanding to leave Real Madrid or go back to Juventus. This is absolutely a disaster waiting to happen. Tottenham, don't do this. Just swallow your pride and go hire Paulo Fonseca. He is a Tottenham manager. He plays nice attractive football. He plays on the front foot. He's easy on the eye, and there's never any danger he's gonna win a trophy. I mean, that, that is it. He is the anti Jose Mourinho. Look, why do you think Roma binned him for him? People are trying to say that Pochettino failed at Spurs. I'm sorry, what? No, reaching a Champions League final. That is getting the most out of Tottenham as a club. Ah, I'm only beginning to realize this, but Historically, this isn't one of England's big boys. Good Greg, he inherited a squad from Tim Sherwood. This isn't a club with a divine right to be winning trophies. So that's why, when they were invited to the Super League party, why? Just because they've got a nice big stadium? How superficial can you get? That's like someone at school. You know, the type of the weird fella who eats his homework. The silent one who mostly smells of fish. And who has naked photos of his mother in his wallet. You know, the type of quiet guy who suddenly makes everyone nervous when he turns up wearing a trench coat to school in May. It's like him suddenly getting invited to a house party just because his dad's got a nice BMW. Tottenham are that club who smell of fish. This isn't a club who should be targeting trophies, no. Entertaining football, finishing inside the top six. Enjoyable 4-3 game. Yeah, though, that is, that is Tottenham. Jermaine Defoe. That's Tottenham. Conte is a serious manager, but Tottenham are not a serious club. I mean, there, there's no shame in this. Most clubs aren't that serious about winning trophies. It, it's fine. All my life, this club has been a selling club. Even as recently as being forced to sell Christian Eriksen. I, and I promise you, they will be again next summer. When Harry Kane leaves, people will be demanding they sign a world-class replacement, but... No! I'm sorry, this man is a Tottenham anomaly. I mean, when Alan Shearer finally left mid-table at Newcastle, yeah, he was a legendary striker, yes! But the club went out and bought Obafemi Martins. A, a Europa League quality centre for the best. And you know what? That that's fine. They also tested the look by trying to go and sign Wayne Rooney. But that'd be like Tottenham now trying to go and entice Erling Haaland. It's, 
it's not gonna happen. I mean, don't get me wrong, if Harry Kane never existed, then there would be no shame in Danny Ings or even Patrick Bamford leading the Tottenham line. Football heritage. Trying to make a statement of intent by convincing Conte to join. No! It's like that smelly weird kid getting a new haircut or buying a new pair of shoes. No, I'm sorry. When you continue to sniff people's armpits at the gym and follow the science teacher home from work, people are still going to look at you weird. Tottenham trying to join the Super League was a perfect example of them taking the progress they made under Pochettino and arrogantly trying to use that as proof of them being massive with an M. Conte is a brilliant coach, a world-class tactician and an incredible motivator. But he's not right to join a sinking club like Spurs. We've successfully shaken off the Pochettino era by now and they're back to being a mid-table club with an outstanding centre forward. People say Conte will make this team a threat. No! Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice! This is exactly what I said about Jose Mourinho. And not even he could get this train going. Apparently he was sacked because he was a manager obsessed with stopping the opposition. Which just thinks of Deli Ali throwing a strop at being asked to defend. Well, now you're getting an Italian defensive holic, so I hope you're ready. A source close to the club said at the time that Mourinho has sucked the culture out of the club and destroyed what Spurs have stood for for years. Isn't, um... Isn't that a good thing? Wasn't that the reason he was appointed? The stamp out the mindset of losing finals? Finishing second? The fact that you were a nice team? Two years later, Mourinho's gone. The first thing Mourinho said in the Tottenham documentary was that Tottenham were too nice. Two years later, and they're still damn nice. And they keep losing every week. I think we're just gonna have to accept the fact that Fabio Paratici he probably wants defensive winning football, but Daniel Levy, he still wants to go back to the days of Harry Redknapp. You cannot have both. He wants exciting, entertaining football, but in reality, the man should want silverware. But I maintain that they taught him walk away from Joyce Mourinho without a plan in place days before a cup final. That was proved to me. Secretly, deep down, they will not admit it to themselves, but they accept mediocrity. They won't do whatever it takes for Conte to be happy. They won't break their back to open the checkbook to, to guarantee trophies. They won't do it. They didn't do it for Pochettino when he should have pushed on, and they didn't do it for Jose. They're not gonna do it now. Trust me, Conte is gonna get so frustrated and not being allowed to spend money at world-class footballers. And they're gonna get frustrated when they languish seventh in the league. This attitude, it's only gonna fly for so long with Conte at the wheel. This is Mourinho Park 2. Trust me, give it 18 deep down Tottenham players, they don't want a winner in charge. Maybe Harry Kane does, but the rest of them, they just want a nice, friendly manager. Someone they can have pizza with on Friday nights. Someone who'll ask him how their kids are. Conte doesn't give a flying monkeys if your kid is type 2 polio and your wife is crippling depression. The only thing he cares about is what happens on the pitch. Pochettino is a nice, lovable, friendly, Seth Rogen cuddly character. Conte is the complete opposite and the complete wrong fit. Trust me, give this 18 months, he'll have gone. He will have gone and you're gonna be tasked with a 20 million pound compensation bill. Trust me, this is not going to work. Anyway, that's the end of the video, lads. Premier League review from the weekend coming tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.